Hey, what's up, guys? I'm Cosmeto, and first and foremost, thank you so much for watching and listening to the first ever Let's Talk podcast. I'm literally reading a script because I won't remember what I'm saying. A show where me and my best friend talk about a topic of choice. Just want to point out, there may be some extra echo in today's episode. Uh, it'll give a little nostalgic feeling. Okay, enjoy. It's dark. We just had a power outage for a second. We were just talking. Welcome again to Back. the first podcast for... It, there's no name still. <laughs> During yeah. the power outage. So to to run you guys up to speed, we were in the middle of just doing our first podcast and the power decided to go out. So um, yeah, that's always great. And I can understand why you think you can hear the echo. Because if I talk like this, our viewers or listeners, I can hear it coming off the headphones, but that's not a big deal. Oh, Yeah, okay, that's where okay. the echo is. That's fine. So people can hear me ramble on in the background. So we rated cookies by Julia. We rated them pretty high up there. So good job. Um, I tried to make a Mickey cookie for my mom. Failed. Yep. Then carved out with a toothpick. <laughs> yeah, like a like a pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> so now we're trying to get. We we had no idea that power. The power freaking just. What were we even talking about? Uh. We're talking about how long we've been planning on doing this actual podcast. Mm. We're also eating, uh, listeners, so we apologize if you have to hear that. But we promise no lip chapping. None of the... None of that. Yeah, it's not an ASMR. Yeah, here. no. <laughs> so, I'm sorry if you guys were expecting that, but... Absolutely not. No, we're not We're not in that world. No, nobody's going to do that to us. So, yeah, so it's been roughly about a month since uh, I, I believe the idea was at least brought up. I, I don't remember when the initial thought was, but... Um, here we are, and here, here we are, and hopefully the, you know. I'm just happy that we're stuff. actually able to sit down and do this, yeah. because with our lives going on, new things are happening. I mean, the new year, I mean, what, what? New job, new opportunities. Hopefully, we leave everything in the past from 2022. That was a nightmare in itself. Agreed, agreed. How was yours? How was your whole 2022 year? It was an eye-opening experience, I would say the least. Um, started off, you know, as crappy as any post COVID year could probably, oh, uh, yeah. pretty much come from, but, uh, it turned better, a uh, new job, you know, eyes, like I said, an eye opening experience, um, definitely for the better now. Yeah. Um, I'm at a better place mentally mm -hmm. and physically as well. So hopefully going into this newer year, um, you know in the place I am right now, which is way better, it'll continue. And that's all I got to hope for. So that's a good vibe. I've been just trying to get back on my feet for me. It's been, we all know what 2022 brought us. Yeah. Well, for me and everybody actually was a part of it. So mm -hmm. that will be later down in the topic of discussion when we get ever, if we ever get into that. So I know that here's the other thing too, for, for last year, it was a lot of realization Mm -hmm. It was definitely a lot of realization. I woke up, I woke up and I was like, this is, this, something needs to change. Cause I, I was in a predicament where I was just like completely, it was our now or never. And I took my chance and window of opportunity. People are like, what is he talking about? What's he talking? You'll find out. You'll find out later down the road. More than likely. More than likely. Absolutely. But it's just like, especially with all the things we do. Like, what was it? It was, you know, I, I got my video games. You got, you got your, um, what, what is it? A mechanic or an engineer? Or I never uh, really asked you what you fully do. <laughs> so as a profession, I, I, well, generically I work on cars, but I work at a dealership and I am in the service, um, section of that job. So mm. I am technically a mechanic. Um, there's many different ways to put into words um right now i'm a maintenance tech so basic stuff you just changes. clean up stuff no like like i work on cars but i i change oil and you know do tire rotations i do some light uh light heavy work i guess you could say oh it's pretty fun brakes uh some suspension stuff i change tires have you ever like took off have you ever like took off like um the most annoying parts of the car and you're like if i have to go through one more bumper or one more tire again this is this is this is the day for me it's definitely crossed my mind at least <laughs> um recently way smoother that's good um, it's either my body's getting used to it or i don't know if it's just mentally i'm okay with it but uh there's definitely been times where you're like 
why am I doing this as a career? Yeah. You know, I don't want to do this forever. And I it, felt that. It crosses your mind. And I think any job would give you that thought at one point. Because um, no job is perfect. I mean, there might be a perfect job out there for you, but it could be the weirdest um could be the thing that you would least expect yeah i'm pretty sure because you know i've been working on cars for a long time and it's my hobby outside of work as well so that's why i decided to get into it as a career but um going off of that it, it wasn't really the most thought out idea as a job it was something that i know paid decent and vehicles are on the road 24 7 whether they get newer smarter electric how whatever it may be oh my god i know um, everything's getting electric now yeah so there's still always a job there like, yeah. there's never gonna be a time where people are not working on vehicles because we all need that that's a fact so yeah. it was a sure job and especially when i first started working um it was a very difficult time i think it was back in 2016 or 2015 around there um it was hard to get a job in general. People weren't hiring and people were just firing and laying off people. So I wanted something where I know that there would always be a demand for. And it was kind of like a sure job. And once you have knowledge in it, you will always be able to get something in that job. That yeah. field. So I, I continued with it. And uh, here I am now. And hopefully well, the way things should work is it'll get more difficult as I move up. But at the same time, it'll get easier like shorter hours for more knowledge yeah higher pay for more knowledge less work mm -hmm. it's more mental at that point so it'll eventually pay back and hopefully it turns into sun um where do you see yourself retiring at a certain age <laughs> i mean if you had to choose the age if you were like comfortable if, if i was thinking right now and with what i'm doing physically mm. every day um hmm. okay so j just as a an idea for, for everyone's uh, knowledge. I'm I'm 26 right now, so um, because of how much my body usually hates me after a while, it would be nice to have an early retirement. I could probably <laughs> go to my 50s comfortably. You said your body hates you. Um, at certain times, um, it uh. might be the weather, or um, it could just be me myself. I just don't want to deal with life. You know, <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I think I think anybody who's hearing this can actually agree with like, oh, we felt that. Yeah, so, comments are flooding already. And uh, you know, the time of the year does play a factor. Winter is a time you never want to get up and work in it. And, yeah. Uh, uh, the, dar the darkness, uh, the early darkness, doesn't help. Um, you know, you, you go to work when it's dark. You come back home when it's dark. But uh, luckily, the job I have is pretty light on the inside since I work more or less indoors, so I kind of forget about time. Luckily, you got that martial arts experience to keep your energy yeah. up. Which actually is which is what I was going to get into anyway, because that's also part of the reason why my body hurts. From karate? <laughs> it, it helps, and it doesn't. Um, what belt are you again? Okay, so maybe we should just introduce ourselves as that part. We should. So <laughs> originally this podcast was supposed to be a martial arts based podcast and we were going to lean into it and I think that's where it's leaning already. Um so right now I am a 5th degree uh master in uh Tang Sudo. Um I've been doing karate since I was 7, so this year marks my 20 years, which is Sheesh, that's awesome. It's kind of crazy to say that you didn't just hit 10 you hit two like hit two zero two yeah <laughs> two zero um and i'm still going so the reason why my body hurts though is because i actually injured myself one time um a little bit of a story time i guess so <laughs> i have a bad left shoulder because i oh, was yeah. competing in a tournament yeah your shoulder and i was uh practicing a breaking routine and I was setting myself up for, for other martial artists that do know the terminology here. Um, I was doing a hammer fist with my left arm. And for the people on the camera that could see me, I was coming across. Uh, I'll try to explain this the best way I could. As if you were to reach out for something to your left with, with your arm completely straight up to your shoulder height. So I was coming across like so, and I was striking the board there. It was only one board. It's only about an inch and a quarter or so by eight inches uh so it's a very simple break for the most part um what i failed to compute when i was performing this was 
as I was extending my arm, and it's no one's fault but, but mine, so I'm not going to say that it was the holder's fault, the person that was holding the board. I'm not going to say it was their fault, but the way I was angled, when my hand struck the board, yeah. my arm was already fully extended. So for the people that might not know how the science of breaking works, I mean, it's a pretty simple idea, but um, I would actually have to have the board in front of where the ending point is. So for me to go through the board, I can't have it where my arm is fully extended when I touch the board because there's no more room to actually swing. So I would hit the board and it won't do anything. I would actually <laughs> have to have it maybe a couple inches forward. Yeah, so when right. I fully extend, my arm is um, slightly bent. And then when it fully extends, it goes through the board. So what happened was, was basically that. So when I struck the board, my arm was fully extended. Now, Did you hyperextend it? I did not hyperextend it. Okay. So what happened, as I hit the board, and I'm trying to summarize this because it could get into a lot of detail. Right, but right, right. When it struck the board, yeah. the pressure of the strike shocked up to my shoulder. Oh. So because I didn't have enough force to go through the board, the pressure traveled up through my hand, my wrist, my elbow. And once it hit the shoulder, because my arm was fully extended, it actually popped it out of socket for half a second. Just the feeling. Yeah, so it, it popped out and it popped itself back in, which was the good part. Wow. The, the only good part of that. <laughs> it's so, it just like, pop, and then it just shakes. It went back in? Yes, it was out and in. And it just happened to be the right angle where it would actually cause it to do that. Because yeah. I'm sure if I angled my arm down or up, it might not have done that. I probably just wouldn't have broken the board. But it yeah. actually you know, shocked in and popped it out. And it went back in. I was able to do the rest of the tournament um pretty much one-handed uh after about 10 minutes it was back to normal you sparred that day one-handed didn't I you i also sparred right of after. course he did <laughs> so after i completed the break with my right hand because that was the left hand that i messed up or shoulder um the next uh event was actually sparring yeah so uh basically what i did was i went to my family because they were there supporting you know i was a uh, i was like 18 or 19 um excuse me one second i just at 18, you said you went? I think I was 18 or 19. Okay. Probably 19, if I want to round it up. I How many was... tournaments have you went to before that? A lot? Ooh. Um, as much as you want to count them, if so, you had to get an estimate. I, uh... Okay, so, let's go back in time. My first tournament that I ever watched um, was actually the very ending of 2003. Really? It was, uh... 2003? Uh, I, yeah. I, I guess I could say some details here because <clears throat> it'll help understand everything. So yeah, go for uh, it. We, we live in Connecticut, and I'll just say that. So we um, there's a tournament called the Connecticut Yankee Nationals, which my federation, um, woohoo, um, <laughs> <laughs> which my federation actually uh, hosts every year around October. Um, that was the first tournament I ever witnessed. I was seven or six. I was like six, seven. I might have just turned seven or something. Yeah. Um, I was a white belt, and they said, hey, if you guys are interested in seeing what you know, else you could do, go check out the tournament and uh, see how you like it. So I didn't compete, but I watched. And I remember this because I still have a T-shirt that it says 2003 <laughs> Kanaki Internationals. It's, That's cool. It doesn't fit me. But, wow. Okay. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> but I still kept it as a memory because it's, uh, you know, just to say that you could have it and you were there. It's really cool. Yeah, that's a good flex. But I've been competing uh, since 2004 because that was in October. So the next following year when the whole new year started and they yeah. started uh, to count the points for the circuit, I guess you could say. So like you ended up getting inspired after seeing the tournament? You I were got, like, oh, I yeah. want to do this. Yeah, and originally yeah. when I first did martial arts, I, uh, I, I didn't like certain subjects because um, for most tournaments you got – Sparring, breaking, forms, and weapons, uh, just as a generic, depending on the tournament. Um, I only liked forms. I was really good at forms. Yeah. Uh, I did not like breaking at the time um, for fear of what may happen. And you look at what happened in, uh, when I turned 19, um, <laughs> even though I didn't expect that, you know. <laughs> yeah, nobody so, expects the breaking of your own body except, except the board. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I only did forms. And I did that for a good maybe two, three years. Um, worked my way up, white, orange, blue belt. Um, once I hit blue belt, around purple, greenish, is when I started doing other things. Yeah. I started practicing weapons, which I didn't compete with yet. 
Um, I did do breaking only because I felt I didn't want to be one-sided with one thing. I tried to be well-rounded. Mm -hmm. So even though it was my weak area, I still wanted to get exposure to it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's actually smart. Yeah, so that way I could at least uh, hold my own, if um, to say that. Um, when did you like have that mindset? Like where you're like, I'm just gonna do it. Good question. It's because uh... it's like at, at the eight, some people like I don't know. Throwing my experience real quick, it's just like my mom and dad were like they they owned your karate school at one point, mm -hmm. and when they passed it down, I think it was just kind of like. I don't know, it was something in the blood, just kind of like it was always there, the karate. I started off at the age, I did the same thing, it was at the age of four. And they paired me with a, I was a white belt. And they paired me with a green belt in sparring. But they, um, I think, I don't know if they, 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 they gave me first after winning and sparring against a green belt. But I swear, I think they, they, you know how like they favor the little kids over like, oh, you did it, yeah, good job. Mm -hmm. I look back, there's an actual video, I look back at the video and I was like, damn, I actually really was going to town in that green belt because apparently my mom says that the green belt was crying that I beat him. Mm. And I'm like, uh, I still didn't believe it. I think it was like still like, you know, they try to go easy on the kid and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But like some of the things I didn't like, I actually never liked sparring, believe it or not. I hated it. I thought it was dumb. I thought it was pointless. I thought it was violent in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And around, I think, 13, you know, when you when you grow or you start becoming a boy, a teenager, yep. you start like thinking differently and acting differently. And then I think I saw the sparring class and I saw what really opened my eyes was I saw a tornado kick. I am not going to explain how a tornado kick works f through video, but if <laughs> I want everybody to imagine they're lifting up their left leg, all right, picking up their knee, they're spinning to the left in a circle, like a full circle. And once you reach the full circle, you jump, switch feet and then kick. The, with the other leg. I hope I explained that better, like, as best as I could. But I saw that kick, and I'm like, I want to learn that. Mm -hmm. 13, learning that kick, we tried it on a board, we tried it on a bag, we tried it in sparring, and after that kick, I was like, this feels great. This feels good. I felt like Spider-Man in my world. You know what I mean? Like, limber, mm -hmm. fun, and over time, when sparring, something I actually hated, became something I like, you end up like you said, you're just kind of exposing yourself in that field because you never know what you're going to like until you actually do it. Very it's, much. It's literally like you look at it and you're like, I don't know. I don't know if I want to do this. And then you sit down and you try it out and you're like, okay, I kind of like this. This is fun. This is actually pretty um, pretty intoxicating because mm -hmm. it's like, listen, there's something about karate that you're sitting there and it's just, I, I always remind myself, it's not really about the belt. I don't care about the belt. I care about how I progressed. Like, how many forms do you know? Off the top of my head. If you, like... I could count it. You can count it. Um, yeah, go for it. Count it. Um, okay, so... Just <laughs> bear with me, guys. I might need a, a second. Um, I'll give you, like, the Jeopardy theme song in the background, where it's like... Doo, 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 doo. Right. So we got nine, ten, Man, there's 12. a lot of forms. Um, okay, so then there's three per black. I was nine. thinking... We never even had Ki Chung Ilbu's. I believe I know 24 forms right now. 24? That's a... I believe. I'm learning three more, so that might be 27 soon. Um, so check this out. We almost know the same. The same. The, it's Tang Sado. We both, if anybody doesn't know. Um, well, since actually, we, we, uh, not to cut you off. No, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but, um, let's at least have... Uh, uh, my friend here, uh, introduce himself as well, <laughs> because he didn't get to introduce his martial arts self. So, um, most of you are, uh, are aware of the YouTube background, but as for me, I'm 27, and I've been doing martial arts for about 20 years, too. Mm -hmm. It's crazy to think about that. And um, I'm a third-degree black belt, in, um, and you're a fifth on, right? Correct. So he, he does outrank me. He's, I, listen, it's... I'd seen this kid perform. It, it shows why he's his rank. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh -huh. But just uh, 20 plus years, third degree black belt, many tournaments, met incredible instructors and students. And it's just like, it really, as you grow, you you stop and you, you look at your belt or like when you're in your uniform. Have you ever like looked at yourself in the mirror and you're just like, wow, I'm here. 
Like, this is it. I made it. So it's like, I'm standing. I think I was, I was 17 when I got my black belt. And I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like standing here. I'm like, Jordan, take a picture of my, my little brother. Jordan, I'm like, take a picture, take a picture. And I looked at this picture actually last month. I looked at it last month and I'm just thinking, I stopped doing all of that stuff maybe two years ago. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, oh, have you ever felt like you just want to get up at three in the morning like you're like at three in the morning bathroom break and you just decide to maybe I could practice doing a few sidekicks right now or a few punches. Maybe I'll just do a form. Why not? Have you ever had that thought of in your head like you want to do it at work or it's like um, at work? Not not so much three in the morning. But, OK, uh, well, I guess that's just me then. <laughs> um, definitely. It, it definitely comes in spurts. It's like uh, I'm not going to say it's a different side of a person, but it, it's in there. So it comes out randomly. It's um. It's almost like you, you just get into it in the moment. Like you might think of a thought and then all of a sudden your your brain is stuck on it. And then you're like, wait a second. Um, like, for, for example, maybe you had a thought. It's like, I wonder if this could work in a, a combo for maybe kicks or punches. Or maybe you're like, um, maybe I want to try this move and see if it works. Yeah. And then you keep thinking about it. And then it eventually kind of eats at you a little bit. So you're like. Wait, let me just try it really quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no matter what you're doing, you're, you're still thinking about it. And you're like, you might get looked a little weird. You're like in the corner doing whatever you're doing. Yeah. And it's like next thing you know, you see this guy kicking the air. It's like, what's what's wrong with him? Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you ever see people do karate at the beach? Oh, yeah. I love I've that. definitely seen that. Um, it, it fits, though. It just works out. I feel like it fits. I mean, ever since the whole, uh, you know, uh, for everyone that's watched this, because I'm pretty sure everyone did, for the most part, uh, Karate Kid, the first one, um, the first one, not yeah. not the not the Jaden Smith one. We're not, talking about we're talking about the original um, wax on uh, wax y- off yes, Miyagi, so Mr. Miyagi, yes, uh, the the pre, uh, the predecessor to Cobra Kai and what is based off of basically. Yes, sir. Um, it had the scene where he was doing you know the crane kick, practicing it mm. in the beach, and honestly, a, a lot of fighting movies around that time had a beach scene if you notice um, most boxing movies rocky he was running on the beach to get more oh, yeah, light-footed yep. because he yep. was a flat-footed fighter um which hmm. it was something he needed to work on and i didn't even think about about it like that that's why he did it because like he he ran on the beach um and and my memory might be a little bit off so if i misquote this please uh you know forgive me for that but um i i think he was he was uh, running with apollo creed apollo creed was teaching him um how to be more uh, light-footed because he was a good fighter, but he didn't know how to block his punches, and he was a really easy target. So he made him go to the beach, yeah. and he said, run, which is very – if anyone has ever really ran on the beach to try, it's very difficult. You know, it's yeah. heavy. <laughs> um, the sand, it, it moves under your feet. So you, you could be running as fast as you can, and you you know someone could probably yeah, speed walk past you. Kicking it all over the place. Yeah, so he did that as a drill, and uh, – to do that it made him lighter on his feet because if the flatter you walk or the flatter you run on the beach the more you're going to sink the slower you are, are so you they a tiptoe would... baby yes yeah me too yeah now <laughs> that, that helped me with the whole flat-footed part because i wasn't really um i i do it instinctively walking around but sometimes sparring i do get a little flat-footed but... i do notice you bop a little bit when you walk you have a little pop-up you like for the people that can't see it he ha- he has his like think of your foot flat and as soon as you're walking forward you push off on the tip of your toe and you're just like little boop like yeah a little so hop. if uh if you see me walk and i get made fun of this all the time because i don't <laughs> notice it if you're watching my head you see my head bounce up and down as i walk like i'm a you know mickey mouse cartoon or something you know where they're like <laughs> dancing and walking like dan, 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 dan. yeah it's, it, it looks kind of like that um i can control a little bit but it's uh it, it keeps me light on my feet um don't know why yeah, I do it, but it's just something I've always done. The one thing I've never, like, I've never, <sighs> there's a lot of people out there in the martial arts world that I've seen, like, they have all this training, all this practice, all this, I don't know, all this, like, mental drilling mindset. Like, from what I learned in karate, it's literally not just a physical sport, but it's literally mental. Like, I, I think when, it, you could do, you can learn this stuff in, like, in school, for example, they teach you this stuff in school and people are like, what are you talking about? I don't know. I think it's called pyometrics, jumping, crawling, sliding. I think that's the name of it. Forgive me if I said that wrong, but like as a little dragon, when you're three years old and you're jumping over the pipes and you're crawling under, um, 
like the obstacles that they have set up for you and you're playing duck duck block which is actually you're practicing high blocking and low blocking the things Mm -hmm. over time you're actually developing that blocking mindset like there's pen times where i have friends like even yourself you we would just mess around we would throw punches and i would just naturally block it and you wouldn't even tell me to block you're just we're just messing around Mm -hmm. and there'll be times when i'll sit there and i'll be like what if i actually had to use it and then i'll think like i think the first i had to use it once um i I, there was there now I'm not confessing anything no fights happen I gotta keep it low key because respect for the other person but I did have to judo flip someone once it was not a fun story but it was in it was in my own home mm-hmm. and there was an argument between this person and I and we're just having this really heated discussion and I said hey look you gotta get out you gotta get out it's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna call I'm gonna call the authorities. I'm gonna have them left, like left, like I'm gonna have them leave. Okay. Like I gotta get you get. I gotta get you out. So this and I and I am not joking when I say this. The person jumps on me because I'm on the phone and I'm trying to talk talk. I'm like trying to talk. I'm like trying to get the phone to like ring here Mm because I'm like I'm literally calling the authorities. I'm not done. I'm done with it. So. They didn't want it, so they jump on top of me, and they're grabbing, trying to get the phone out of my hand, screaming. And I'm like, what is going on? I got this I got this monkey in my back. Like, I'm jumping. Yeah. <laughs> so, worst case scenario, I'm like, okay, um, my throat is being grabbed. I feel like I'm being choked. I grabbed whatever I could, and I just twisted, and they landed. <laughs> when they landed, they landed on this metal part of, of, of my bed frame. Oh. So, like, the center of their back met this metal bar and it think of their back vertically okay. think of the bar horizontally oh yeah that's so break your back move. yeah the, yeah so so they come down vertic they come down vertically the bars there horizontally pa they just bounced but they hit the ground so hard they actually bounced back up they had a back injury for like two months but it's just like i never wanted to use it at the end of the day i feel horrible using it I mm-hmm. never, I never want to hurt. That's my goal. Like the point of martial arts, people are like, "Oh, you, you're gonna use martial arts, uh, but you, but you don't like fighting." That's not the point. The point of the, it's not. I'm not gonna go in there and then like be like, "All right, I'm ready to fight Mike Tyson." Like I'm not gonna, or like I'm ready to score up with my teacher. Yeah. It's literally to just. It's a benefit. It's a growth. It's a good mindset that you want to be a part of, and it's it's just teaching you how to do the right thing. I mean, when you when you became a master belt, are you like, "Oh yeah, I'm a master now. I I tell you what to do." Like. Not at all. Yeah. Like, what's your mindset on that? So. When that happened for me, when I graded to that high level, which um, for my federation, and I think it might vary, um, I'm not sure if it does vary, uh, master belts, when and where it turns into a thing. Usually it's fourth degree from my understanding. Fourth. So yeah. when I became a fourth degree, um, honestly, it was the opposite of what people would assume. Like A lot of people would probably think, oh, power trip time. Um, you're going to get more confident and um, you're going to be a little cocky. And, and obviously you wouldn't because, you know, when you take martial arts, it's, it's the opposite of that. So you already yeah. understood the journey. If you're already that high in rank, um, most likely if you're grading to fourth degree, you are not cocky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I, I felt like I wasn't ready, you know. Initially, that was one of the first scariest uh, grading times I, I actually had, uh, besides this last one, um, when I was younger, grading up to the next belt was kind of just a part of the motion. It's like, okay, um, for, from my federation, we grade every three months for the lower belts. Yeah, that so, sounds about right. Yeah. For the GUPS, uh, on average. Um, and at that point, it was just routine. It felt like it was a class, you know, you see the same people, same faces, you learn a couple of new forms, a couple of different moves, you might demonstrate something a little bit different, and you move up to the next step, whether it's a gup or a belt. Um, and then once, you know, I became a black belt, it slowed down a little bit more, because uh, my federation does it where the number of degrees you're moving up to is how many years you have to wait. So, for example, first degree took one year, two years to get to second after that first degree, yeah. three years after second to get your third, so on and so forth. Um, it's not easy guys it's it's, it's not it's not they don't ju- we don't they don't just give belts away by the way this is stuff that you work hard for so yeah it takes years yeah and if you have the will and energy to continue on it it, it pays back but it's uh it's 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 um it's kind of like I'm drawing a blank but um it's definitely a, a commitment 
yeah, at the very okay, least. Yeah, think of it like your job, what you're doing right now. Yeah, yeah like if you're going to build a career, you're not just going to stop halfway through or, um, you know, sell yourself short of your, you know, your own energy and work. So you're going to gonna try to at least commit some energy and time and knowledge and, you know, some blood, sweat and tears into moving up so you could move on. So it's the same with martial arts. Uh, Man, I want to get up and just start kicking. Yeah, see? <laughs> that's just, it's just that thing. You talk about it, you feel it, and you start like, oh, how about this technique? I want to do a kick. I want to do a punch. All that good stuff. It's definitely the, uh, the thought does bring that up. Are our voices still recording? Yeah, your camera, your, your microphone actually picks up on the OBS software. Oh, okay. I was just trying to make sure because I'm over here looking in the corner and uh, I, I didn't see it. So I was like, wait, did they hear anything I said? Oh, no, you're good. For the okay. people that can't hear, we're actually using two microphones. So obviously, they, they, they can't see. You're using two microphones and it, was, it wasn't that bad to set it up. My computer's probably mus using most of the energy in this, hot, in this basement studio thing we got going on. So yeah. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, continuing on. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I would say talking about, like, it's a commitment, but um, it, it doesn't feel like a commitment. It's a natural thing. It, it's it's a want. If you want to do it, you do it. If you don't want to do it, no one's forcing your hand at it. It's, um, it's really based on you as a person. So if anyone out there is, like, really interested in starting a martial art and, um, like I said, I, I just... I'm talking from a, a Tang Soo Do standpoint. I'm not sure how other schools do or, or other styles. So, yeah. um, you know, don't quote me if it's like, oh, well, this guy said it goes like this, but another place is different. It's just a generic roundabout. Most places do it like this. Um, if you have a will to do it, I, I would definitely say give it a try. Um, might not be for everyone. Everyone has different types of things. It's great for, uh, uh, it helps relieve stress so much stress <laughs> um, it clears your head um it, it, it's good exercise um you know different class topics might work you out more than others but um it's it's mind and body together and it really ties it together in my opinion where it, it helps your body just work with yourself it's like a self-healing thing sometimes that's the thing there's like so many to the trade everybody thinks a lot of martial arts i mean okay so martial arts yes it is a violent sport it is i'm just gonna go hands down and say martial arts is a fighting style it is a style to defend yourself it's it, it it's un unfortunately some people recognize it as a just once like you're just you're learning to fight i mean i think that's not the total concept of the martial art well there was i had this i i used to teach uh, a couple a year or two ago and um i i stepped down from teaching to uh just just better my mind mentally and during during the my teaching days there was this one kid you know one parent walks up to me and goes I want my kid to learn. I don't know if he's ready. He's six years old. He 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 fights with me all the time. He always tries to get in fights with the with the with the stu with the students at school. What do you think you could do about that? And I'm like, okay. So I got this kid, right? He's six years old. He's a bully. He's the kid's a bully. Like he is the problem. But my but the mother wants to sign him up for martial arts. And I'm like, this is gonna be different. So here we go. We put this kid. He's six years old. I gotta say, the orange white belt class, beginning startup. This kid is asking questions. He's asking like, "Why do we have to do this? Why do we do this? What is up with this? Like, I, this is stupid." Like he's saying things like he's saying things off at the top of his head. Clearly, uh -huh. this kid just needs to just. He's saying whatever he thinks. Mm -hmm. That's right off the bat. He called me short as soon as he saw me. I was like, "Hey, I just vibe with it. Like you just gotta you gotta learn how to." You got to learn how to respond. Teach him how to respond differently. He, the correct way. He, yeah, the correct way. Like if he calls me short, you want to respond with, hey, you just got to vibe with it. Or you can do the right thing. There's, there's, many, there's, teachers, there's many teachers I would say, or I would say, hey, we don't do that here. We don't, talk to, we don't talk to people like that. I'm assuming that's been said to him many times and he still never got the kick. There's different ways. You know, it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. I think it took like four black belts to raise this kid. Eventually, years go down the road or months go down the road, kid hits an orange belt, saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, he's getting it down. But you know what clicked? It was that special bond. I don't, I don't think he was truly seen at home. 
Hmm. I don't think he was truly recognized at home. And that's the thing about the martial arts too. It's, it's, you get recognized a lot. People, you know, the teachers observe you. They watch you. They make sure you know like what, what's needed. For, like what, what does this kid need versus what this kid needs, right? Hmm. So that six-year-old, like I said, I'm not going to say his name, but he was, he, he went from this, he was bad in the beginning. And we worked and we taught and we not only, we never wanted to, uh, some people deserve a little bit of um, redirection, uh-huh. but in the way it should be taught, and, 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 correct, and everybody has their own way of teaching, I like to inspire others, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, you got the six-year-old that has no idea how to kick. He does a kick and I'm like, you want to know how you can do better? Like, that's the question right there. It's like, that was a good kick, but you want to know how you can do better? Never heard that before. His eyes went up like, yeah, yeah, sure. He never said it was stupid. I asked if he wanted to be better, and he wanted to take on that. Mm-hmm. You know, he won his first tournament. Oh, really? He went to a tournament, and he won. You know what he did to the person that he beat? Gave him a big hug and said, good job. That's the growth. That's what we teach. It's not all violent. We yeah. literally took this kid. I don't know what the family history was, but we took this kid and just turned his life around. And I still see pictures of the whole group on Instagram and there he is still smiling still loving karate and I sit there and I almost cry sometimes looking at that and I'm like had we not paid attention to that had we just treated him like just an individual just oh yeah he's just another he's just another cash dust collector that's not what that is not what any martial arts school should should be you you come in they are they are they are looking at the school like maybe this will help my kid and that's, they are trusting you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's why you got students in your corner because they trust you. You probably have had dealt with so many different students, all oh, shapes yeah. and sizes, it's... all different emotions, all different roller coasters. Yep. And you still sit there and you're like, you're still presenting on, putting on this same face that you've been doing for years since you started teaching. And you still got people that probably want to rip your eyes out but say, you know what? I can't because he, he taught me so much. You know what I'm saying? Like... There's times that my, my students want to kill me, and they tell me that. <laughs> they say, but you helped me through so much, and I just can't do that to you. <laughs> I usually uh, I like to read my classes sometimes. Oh, read? And uh, reading as I, I like to see their faces. To oh, see, observe. okay. I, I, I'm observing their faces. Got you, got I'm, you, okay. Like, let's just say, um, I, okay. So <laughs> I was teaching a class, and uh, I, I usually teach in the morning for the most part. Um, at first check to see if they're tired because uh you know the morning time it's it's, a, it's on a weekend i usually teach uh no one wants to really be there in the morning but i don't either, oh, either have 10 the, o'clock 8 a.m um well actually mine is a little bit later oh uh, there is there is classes that are at like eight in the morning um i actually teach the 11 o'clock one but even then you know for the most part i have a lot of teenagers and uh you know when i was a teenager i wanted to sleep on yeah. the weekend you know whether i needed it or not it's just sleeping is great so i would read to see if they're tired and i would like to give them always a fair warning because i like to create a very close bond with my students they still respect me as obviously um you know their instructor and um their master and such but um i also like to be friendly with them you know a little bit of small talk because these are people that i'm going to be teaching for years to come they're going to grow up with me yeah as i'm going older and learning more too so I want them to like me as a person as well. So I would talk to them, and I it would usually give them a fair warning. And I read their faces, and I will say, you guys are going to hate me for this class. <laughs> You've said and, that before, too. And yeah. I, would, I would say that, and it's like, but don't worry. You'll like me in the end because you're going to get a lot out of this. Yeah, yeah. So I'll That's give the them the stuff. heads up, like, it's not going to be fun, or even if it is, it, it might just be physically straining. Yeah. It's like, I'm really going to push you guys. You guys are going to reap a lot of rewards from this. And, uh, yeah, you, you could smile now. You can smile later, whatever you prefer. And sometimes I would start teaching, and uh, I would do, like, a really intense warm-up because okay. I want to get them. Uh, how, sorry to cut you off. How long yeah. is the warm-up? Like, you said intense warm-up. How long is it? It really depends on oh, no. what I. <laughs> so I it varies. Most of the time, the longest I've ever done was a 15 minute warm up, but it's okay. 
a very fast warm up because I usually only have an hour to play with. Yeah. Um, okay. But Respectable. Starting with a heavy warm up, the rest of the class is following that pace. Yeah. So I'll do like 100 jumping jacks. I'll have people run around. I'll have them do burpees. I'll have them do push ups, crunches, light stretching just to make sure we don't pull muscles and yeah. you know, we loosen up our hips and such. And then after that, I would read their faces. And um, sometimes I see, you know, some grimaces. And then I would try to be a little lighthearted. I'm like, uh, so uh, how you guys doing? And no response. And their faces are kind of blank. And it's like, <laughs> okay, well, that's a good answer. Yeah. Like, I understand. I said, just give me a thumbs up to make sure everyone's good because I don't want anyone to get winded or yeah, pass yeah, yeah. out. Because um, I've been there before in a class where I almost passed out. You know, you can only push yourself so far. And I don't want anyone to get hurt while I'm teaching. So I would do that. And th this is the crazy part, which is kind of like why I'm getting into this. In the end, when the class is done, or nearing the end, maybe the last 10, 15 minutes, whether we're doing punching drills or sparring or, or uh, self-defense throws and such, um, they always seem to be smiling in the end. That's good. That's so, what you want. Um, it started off with... Sometimes. Not not so good, and like I said, I said they're going they're gonna hate me, but in the end you'll feel better. Whether it's because they did a nice workout and they're like, wow, I feel really good now, or maybe they're just it's a internal thing where it's like, oh, they know if they could get through it, it's like that was nice, you know, I'm good, yeah. I'm done, it's over, you know. I know that feeling. Oh but in God. the end, in the end, I never had, and and I'm not saying this in any sort of way, but I, I guess I I could say I never had a student say that was a bad class you never had somebody say you were a bad teacher and like no not not that if if it was it was not in those words yeah maybe i, I never heard someone say I, I guess maybe it's just the respect behind it like it's just something that doesn't need to be said yeah 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 um i i basically read it off of my school has a few teachers um i'm just one of them if they stop showing up to my class, then I kind of take that as they probably don't like the way I teach. You know, it's, I never even, okay, so we had this instructor that would teach on Saturdays in the morning. Okay. We tried to do this little test, okay? My instructor at the time said, okay, so this, this instructor t uh, teaches at 8 a.m. every Saturday. You only get two black belts that show up. And that's a black belt class. And then they went, all right, guys, so this Saturday, this instructor is going to teach to just cover the other instructor. Mm -hmm. you get, they're all poker face in, this, in, that, in my class. In the classes, they were all poker face. Mm -hmm. um, they'll, light up if, they'll, they'll light up if they want. They don't have to. It's all up to them. So I told them, I was like, hey, look, this, this person is going to be coming in. And uh, they're like, okay. That, that morning, it was like, 15 black belts that showed up to that class because of this specific instructor. The original was so hurt and so heartbroken because it's just like, it's like, you can't, it's the one class this guy got at 8 a.m. just to teach. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mind it being one black belt, maybe two, but it's like, you see a whole squad of 15 people coming in and then the next Saturday, there's two, only the two black belts that are there after the fact. So he made an announcement and we said we should all give our instructors a chance. You will take, think of it like a shop. You, okay. We shop everywhere. We go to American Eagle, Hollister, J.C. Penney's. We're never going to find the, the clothes that we want all the time in those locations. That's uh -huh. why there's such a variety. That's the term, variety. Every yeah. instructor is different, and that's what I like. I had this, well, I had, God, dude, I had like nine instructors. Nine instructors. And they all taught me something different. You know my most recent instructor? My most recent instructor, the first form, for the people that don't know the term, Kicho Young Ilbu or um, Seiki Young Ibu or Seiki Young Ilbu. Th these are forms that are learned. Like uh, Seiki Young Ilbu is the first form. Kicho Young Ilbu is the first form. We're learning how to do this thing, a block. If you guys don't know what a low block is, take your, take your left hand. Bring it to your opposite shoulder, almost like looking like you were making a triangle with your elbow. Swipe the dust off that right shoulder and then keep your hand closed. You got a low block. Make sure that other opposite hand is pulled back, also known as a chamber, as if you're elbowing somebody. My instructor takes my hand and goes like this, keeping it tight. So for the people that didn't see that, he pulled his arm up and pushed it yeah, back. Yeah, I pulled it up and I just kept it. I'm like, why? And he's like, well, you're not going to do a crappy elbow. Everything's tight. And I'm like, 
holy crap. <laughs> this is my first time in this guy's class for, you know, the, the first, that was the first time I joined this dude's class in six years. He was, he's teaching a Saturday, six years straight, only two black belts. I don't know how many people showed, but from what I understand, the majority was, was two. But the one time I went after six years of finally deciding to go, I learned so much from one, the first form, dude, the first form that I learned when I was like a white belt years later, I'm a black belt now. Now I'm learning things from the, from the first form that even existed. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm saying like there's so much in the martial arts world. There's a variety. That's why I don't believe there is a such thing as a bad instructor. I believe you can be a bad instructor if you don't know how, know, know what you're doing. There's a lot of people that I will respectfully say there's a lot of people that do not deserve black belts. There's a lot of people that don't deserve it, and I and I mean that with a lot of respect. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I guess it's, I would have to say that too. I mean, um, it's like I'm not yeah, coming at and, anybody. And once again, I it, it's. I guess it's with anything because there's. <sighs> it's hard to talk about. Well, I, okay, so like, like, okay, for the people <laughs> that are listening, this could be taken two ways because a lot of people might think that it's like, wow, these guys talking right now are are being a holes because uh, they're saying that some people don't deserve what they spend their yeah, time on. It's side, like, yeah. no, no, it's it, that's not what we're trying to say because for all the martial artists listening, I'm. Pretty sure you guys know what we're talking about. For the other people, let me explain. So, just like anything, uh, it, it doesn't need to be martial arts. It could be, uh, imagine you're at a job. It could be any job. And you're the person that puts in a lot of work. You're like, I, I want to feel like I earned this money. You know, I, I try my best. I, I want to please my boss. I want to... I want to do good. I, I want. Cold. Yeah, it's a little chilly. Down it's here, a little but. chilly. We're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> That's right. But um, continuing with that, you're a person that really likes to do their job, and you want to do your best at it because it makes you feel like that's that's the whole reason why you're there. You're there to make money. You want to yeah. do a good job. That's why you're there. But then you have that one coworker that is kind of just. I don't know, being lazy, maybe not doing their job 100. Oh, you're gonna do this work related? Yeah, that's. I'm a doing good, this work related because that's very I feel good. like good everyone analogy. could. Uh, everyone could relate to this. So. You have that one coworker that you might feel like sometimes uh, doesn't do as good a job, or he's lazy and he doesn't want to do anything, or maybe he just skates by under the radar where the boss doesn't notice it, and it's like, whoa! Oh why? my god, I hate that! I hate that so much. <laughs> it's like, wow! And then, and then the first time you do something, um, maybe a little bit, maybe you're tired or something, and you're at work, and you, you slip up, or, or or you come in late by a few minutes because you overslept, you missed your alarm, something. And then you, you get in trouble. You get talked about it, but yet this other coworker uh, comes in late all the time, or he he's always doing something wrong, but he never gets caught. And the one time you do something wrong, you get caught. It's really right? funny. It's I'm sorry to cut you off, but it's so funny that you talked about that because you know that next week's topic topic is going to be about work. Okay. Yeah, it's going to be great. So <laughs> it's going to be a lot of conversation between that. I'm sure. Yeah. So <laughs> keeping that analogy there. Now put that, and instead of saying it's work, uh, you're at a karate studio. Now you're doing your best. You want to move up to the next gup or degree. You, you want to get your next belt. You, you, you work your butt off, and it, you really want to be good at it. You're trying to make your stances nice and clean. You, you want to execute everything properly, uh, throw energy into it. But then there's this other person in class that, once again, is kind of skating by, maybe... Maybe uh, an instructor might pick on you a little bit more because he sees potential. I, that's an assumption, but let's just say that. And this other person is in the corner, and he's just kind of going through it, and he he literally is not doing anything special. Like he's just doing the motions. Yeah. Now you guys, everyone's usually friendly in this, so let me explain that this is like a friendly thing when I'm saying this. No one's after each other or anything when we're saying this. Of course, yeah, right. But. You guys are about to become black belts, so you grade. You guys both become black belts. Now, you, the person who is really working hard, you felt like you earned it, and, you know, great. That's that's perfect. That's exactly how you should feel. But then this other person was just trying to get it just to get it. And there's two different types of black belts. You have the person that is really doing it for the art, and then the person that's just doing it just to get it. So Yep. If you that, put, hit, that hit me. Yep. So if you put them next to each other yeah. and you have them throwing a kick or punch or doing a form, there's two differences. You have crisp and clean. You and, and like I said, um, 
saying this friendly and this might be an assumption, but you have crisp and clean, and then you have the next person who skated by who's just doing the motions. They could do it. They they are still a black belt because they still did the training, they still did the time, they know the material. You know they do that at tournaments, right? Mm-hmm. The people that just like, I'm just going to go to this tournament because I can actually just compete. And then we think of it like, oh, you did the form, but do you actually know what you're doing? Like, do you know how to do the form? For the, for the people that aren't watching, and um, I'm just quick about this because he's in discussion with something. You have you have like a punch, right? And when you when you shoot out the punch, you got there's two different punches. You have the full pull, everything's there, and then you have the. Mm, mm. If people don't see what I'm doing, I'm just like doing a little punch, not really doing any commitment to it. Just placing just, the hand there. Yeah, just putting the hand there. And then in the form, you got these black belts that are at these tournaments, and I'm watching them just kind of walk through the form like they're at a park. I'm like, what are you doing? This is not what you signed up for. The tournament is a tournament, bro. You can't just walk in there yes. dancing. Like, I, I, in my opinion, you can't, you can't be just being all noodly. You got to yeah. have some f- spirit. Yeah, so going back into it, that's the two different types of black belts that we're referring to, where we're not saying that they didn't earn the black belt because they did the time and they understood the assignment and they did it. I like but that. They understood the assignment. They understood the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> but That's awesome. did they really put their heart in it? Yeah. There's a big thing. like, And I think many types of uh, fighting styles, whether it be boxing or Muay Thai or just anything that's considered a, a sport or a martial art, yeah, there's there has to be heart. And, and heart is an actual thing, you know? It's like, that's your will to do and your your energy and your, your love for it. If you're lacking heart, that's like lacking a piece of your arsenal. So, yeah, you could do everything else, but you're lacking your heart. Yeah. It's like almost like a, not trying to be, ugh, I hate doing this analogy. Right, let's be a little safer. It's like a flu shot. I really can't get clean if I don't have the vaccination. You know what I mean? It's like you stuck a needle in me, but it's like, where's the where's the vaccine? It's like, yeah. that's the biggest part. You know what I mean? Like a chamber to a block or a a chamber to a kick, right? If I kick and if I just have my hand and I just drop my leg, that's crap. <laughs> that's yeah. not good. The, the I, I see what you're saying. I, I the, the heart has to be there. Well, I could also do a better analogy for people that, you know, might not understand fully. Because um, I, I feel like everyone understands boxing for the most part. because Boxing it's, is a good analogy, yeah. So... Uh, heart is a big thing in boxing. So, for example, um, you have two people fighting each other, and you know, you're, let's just say they're both knockout kings. They like to knock people out instead of, um, you know, winning by points. Yeah. So you have one person that's doing it because he's just there to do it, and one person that really wants to do this. Well, you get a two difference. Yeah. The so difference. now they're fighting each other. The guy who is just doing it to do it, he knocks out the guy who is really there and is in it to win it. When he's on the ground, he gets up as quick as he can because he has the will to continue on. Yeah. You knock down the other guy, so let's just say vice versa. The other guy's on the ground. He doesn't get up as quick. He might get up, but he, he, he takes his time. He's just there to be there. Eventually, if they're going knockout for knockout back and forth, who do you think is going to be the, the person that's still standing in the end? The fierce one. It's going to be the one that has the heart. Yeah, the one that got that's that. That's the heart. Yeah. Without the heart, you're going to end up being on the ground because you're going to be like, this ain't worth it. Yeah. I'm going to stay on the ground. Did you say, um, you ever see Mike Tyson's final fight? The one where you bit the ear? <sighs> no. Oh. I, it was the one, that wasn't his last fight, was it? Uh, I know he it got the banned one, at he, one point. I know but. he lost. He lost. And he was like, I don't think I have fight. I have it in me anymore. I'm sorry. I let everyone down. We're talking about the final fight as in the exhibition fight like his that we last watched? One, not, was it his exhibition? Well, we remember He looked we, young. He didn't have hair. Okay, he, so this was uh, probably before the exhibition. Because if you guys don't know, that he did an exhibition fight maybe a couple of years ago. He said the same thing. He was like, he goes, you know, I don't think I got what I, I don't think I got that heart anymore. I don't think I got that fierce that these, that these other, um, that these other people are trying to like bring it's just I, I don't think i got it anymore and i'm like that really broke me because i'm just i'm like thinking mike tyson man like for him to say that it's like i mean the guy's old 
He's he's getting at that age where he needs to relax for starters. He's a, he's he's worked hard. Mm-hmm. He deserves a break. He's okay. done enough. He's done plenty enough. Agreed. But for the people out there that are listening and watching, listen. This is this is this is my ending because we are wrapping it up soon. Mm-hmm. Look, you heard it from both sides. There, it's it's life is life is like a to me it's. And I'm sure to, to you, maybe life is like martial arts. Everywhere we go, we walk it, we breathe it, we 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 exert it in our own ways. And like, if we see a situation, what do we do? We observe the situation, we assess the situation, we analyze, we see what we can do to benefit. We never want to go for the most impulsive, negative result because that doesn't really make sense. It wouldn't really benefit. And the heart is has to be there too, from work to school. Anywhere you go, and I mean, for cleaning your damn room, <laughs> like cleaning your room, man. Don't shove it under the bed like we did as teenagers. You're probably our age. Some of us are like, some of you guys are 26, 27. Some of you are 15 listening to this, and I know some of the people in the Discord that are are work. You know, these people in our Discord, they're working like on our like, they're working on like. Uh, animation projects, 3D projects. One guy's working on a song at age 12. You got like this 11 year old kid that's working on a video game. And I'm like, you know what I was doing at 11? I was playing my GameCube. <laughs> that's what yeah. I was doing. I was trying to. My my goal was to finish Luigi's Mansion in GameCube. <laughs> but yeah, just being the next boss. Like uh, I'm still trying to figure out what to do this, or you're still trying to remember that cheat code that you saw on your computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheatcodes.com or something yeah, like that. Cheatcode <laughs> Central. Cheatcode Central. Kind of remembers that. Cheatcode Central. I've been on that one a few times. Cheatcodes.com gave me so many ads, it messed up my computer. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know if you have any like thing you want to tell anybody. Like it, like a heart to heart moment for all the people that maybe like deciding what they want to do or like something martial arts jobs whatever well okay so i'm I'm gonna start it with this everything that we said in this segment um this is opinionated i'm sure a lot of people will agree and some people will probably disagree with what we said uh please don't take any offense to anything we said because that was never the point in this we're just sharing right what martial artists probably don't say and a lot of us think this you know it's nothing bad it's not that we for the negatives that might have been brought up in this segment it wasn't really a negative it's just just talking it we're just talking yeah so i'm gonna start off with that because i don't want to offend anyone you know we're, we're here to yeah, we want to make it clear. Up. We are here to talk. We are not trying to offend nobody. Like, yeah, that's... We're, we're just bringing things up, and yes. and I hope that you know, for some people that are listening, that this could help some people. Um, uh, if not, then, well, I hope we could soon. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> give us the opportunity. Come to our class. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's promotion there. <laughs> um, so, for the people that would like to start martial arts, I would definitely say, please give it a try if you have an interest don't be afraid to do it when i was young and i was getting into it, i always said yeah i want to do i want to do i want to do it it wasn't until someone pushed me to do it that i actually did it um if you have the choice to push yourself i i would say just give it a try if you have an interest don't do it if you don't want to because we're not trying to sell you on the fact that saying hey martial arts will change your, will change your life i mean it, it will but if that's not what you want to do then that's okay yeah um <laughs> For all the martial artists out there, just keep pushing, you know? Uh, don't let any of the... I'm trying to make a nice heart to heart here. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, you're bringing a tear to somebody's eye. Okay, hope so. <laughs> Hopefully not a painful tear. Ugh. Oh, no, okay. don't um, need that. <laughs> he um, told me to do better. <laughs> Who does he think he is? <laughs> this guy? <laughs> So for all the people that are out there, just keep pushing. If you if you feel like you're going through a time where, and I'm, I'm saying this because I've been there, um, because I know there's a lot of people out there that are probably thinking this. Absolutely. Um, if you're in a portion of your martial arts career where you feel like, like kind of like a plateau moment for those that work out, you know, the plateaus when it just kind of gets stale. Mm. We've all been there. We've had times where we've taken breaks. We, we came back to it. If you're going through a period in that, uh, no matter what your age may be, but you still have the love for it and you still want to continue it, don't feel like because you're going through that moment that that's the way you're always going to feel about yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's not like, oh, man, I lost interest and it's done. Um, martial arts doesn't usually work that way. Since it kind of becomes you, it's it's just you. So, um, It's just you. I like that. It just... just 
I never keep even pushing. Heard, I never it, it's like it, any. I'm trying to put my words together. No, you're making here. so much sense with the, just by saying it's you. It's like, and I'm not saying it's it's. You're the problem. You, you, you're the problem. No, no, no. That's not what we're, I'm saying. I'm saying it's you. It's you as a. It's a personal thing. I get it too. It's just like if you're going through work and you get stuck in a rut, and it's like, wow, I really hate this job. It's a dead end job. Blah blah blah. Whatever just a you want to say. Feeling. Everyone gets those times. Yeah. Same thing with martial arts. It, it's a great thing. Dude, there might be those times where it's like, wow, I'm doing this for nothing. Why am I spending the money on classes? Why am I doing this? I should stop. Just give it a little bit of time. Think it twice. Take a break if you need to. It's not bad to take a break. We've all done it. Everyone has busy lives. If if, if it's because the the money's short, that's okay. If it's because you're too busy, that's okay. Martial arts is always going to be a part of you because it is you. Going back to that. <laughs> I like that. So, you said martial arts is going to be a party because it's you? It is you. Yeah. You are what you practice. It's not about the style. It's about the person. It's not what you, it's not you are what you eat. It's you, you are what you practice. Yeah. No matter what you it is. You are what you practice. So if you're practicing martial arts, that's you. you. You created your own art in an art. This is why he's the master bell, guys. Like This is, <laughs> this is why he's the guy. <laughs> yeah, so you're there because you added. You, just think about it. Because you matter in that art. Yeah, yeah. Because without you there, it won't continue. Whether you're a teacher or not, if there's no students, there's no master. And if that person doesn't continue his journey, and this is up to you, because I know a lot of places would encourage you to teach eventually. Whether you want to teach or not, if you wanted to just stay a student or an instructor and a student, whatever you would like to do. Yeah. Just know that now you you, you matter because you're in it yeah. and you're what's keeping it going because without the student like i said there's no master so if there's no students nothing can be taught everything disappears this arts all the arts that we're learning if it doesn't get carried on to the next person it will never grow it will die it will cease to exist so just think about it. even if you're a white belt or you're just even thinking about this like just to start going into this you will become you will be, well, what did you say earlier in the podcast? That you will be recognized. Yeah, being recognized. So you're there and you matter because you're, you're carrying on something that has more weight than, I'm not going to say most things in the world, but it's a very big thing. It's an art that's been alive for who knows how long, depending that's, on the art. Yeah, that's the other thing. It was like real quick. It's just 2,000 years of martial arts. You are you you by yourself are carrying just tradi not just by yourself individually. Actually, yeah, you individually are you, still. individually. Yeah. You are. Don't worry about anybody other belts. Don't you you work together. You are you are a unit. You are brother and sisters. And but actually, I, I hate to cut you off. No, you're good. I, I you're apologize, good. Apologize. It's all good. Just like what you said. Don't worry about anyone else. Because when you're in the class, you, you're doing it for you. Yeah. Yes, you guys are working together as a unit. You guys are a class. You guys are friends. Um. But everyone has their individual journey. You guys are just sharing that journey. And it's always important to know everybody has their their mess ups. Everybody will make human mistakes. Mm -hmm. And, th and I think you gotta you gotta support each other in those kinds of fields. You know what I mean? You can't out anybody. That doesn't make you. Go, you can recognize your. You can either. What would, oh my god! It was um. You either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself become a villain. That's what it is. That's that's from Batman. Okay, and, I was gonna uh, say, Two Face I said that. that. <laughs> and, and I and I understand why he said that because it's like you either you either die a hero, you either do the right thing, you either keep doing, you know, you, you do the right thing. It's so easy to do the right thing, but it's a lot easier to do the wrong thing. Exclude people, not Agreed. not just ignore, be a bully. It's so so easy to do that. But just going in there and fighting and. I gotta say this. This is my closing thing, real quick, and that'll okay. lead you back. That's fine. It's just don't let yourself beat yourself. I mean that as in don't let your own negative thoughts impact your journey on whatever you're doing. Because if there is some good in your life, this guy right here told me one day if. Something is good in your life, then eventually some 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 little thing is gonna come and try to mess it up to see how you react to it. Best bet: martial arts. Observe, analyze. Don't impulsively act. That's my closing statement. I don't know if, if you wanted to add more. 
Like, what? What's your I thoughts mean, still on it? We could make a whole day worth of a podcast. I know we so could. Like, so... We could talk about this forever, and I love. I love it. Yeah. So I-, I love it. Actually, my question for all the viewers, listeners, um, for this podcast segment, we, we were thinking about doing different subjects. If you guys want to hear more about martial arts and maybe different subjects, if any of the martial artists listening out there, they want to say, hey, I, I just have a couple questions. Can you put in your segment where, I don't know, your opinion on a certain kick or maybe a style or just any type of martial arts question, you know, definitely let us know. Um, if you want us to do more of this, just let us know if you want us to talk about this. We, we have a lot of knowledge in it. We're not, we're not the all-knowing people, but... If you guys have questions, let us know. And if you want us to do more, just, um, yeah, just let us yeah. know. I don't know. <laughs> no, it's good because it just gives a lot of people opportunities to just bring out their own opinions and things. And, you know, honestly, if we're wrong on anything, let us know. We take the L. That, yeah, we're okay. We, we were students before we were teachers, okay? So, luckily, yeah. we, we know how to take criticism. And uh, if we're wrong, just please point us out. Yeah, just help um, us out. Yeah, well, because... We're learning from each other, right? So, if I mean, for God's sakes, we still haven't even come up with a title for this. <laughs> we'll we'll yeah. <laughs> we'll, think, we'll think of something, but um, dude, is there anything you wanted to say? Anything else? Like anything? <laughs> um, how about this? We'll we'll just pick a subject where it's opinionated both sides. Okay. We'll end with this. Well, first, let's agree on it. What, what do you want to? Just, just pick something. What are you thinking? Like the it, next topic for next week? Um, <laughs> whatever. whatever you I was like. thinking jobs, like I like before. Like we can just stick to with like jobs and just talk about certain work environments and just discuss who feels like. In my opinion, I have a lot to say about work environments. We could talk about if we got fired and stuff like that. I, I will never bring up anybody's names, but I will never bring up the company. I will never bring up the business. I will just talk about, I worked in this environment before. So we can definitely talk about that. I'm sure okay. I'm sure a lot of people would love to hear those stories, but yeah. it's your it's opinions. Let us know in the comments section. What were you thinking? Um, for subjects? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we could talk about work. We could talk about... Oh. Um, Honestly, I I actually would like to hear what the viewers would like to hear. Yeah, um, that sounds a lot better. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll go with the work segment next, mm-hmm. and from there, I'm hoping that and you know, for those that are listening, please let us know what you would like to hear from us. Um, it could be anything. We, we we're actually pretty open books here, and we actually have a lot behind the surface. So we, you you might find that we might be uh, uh, we might have the same hobbies or anything like like that. So yeah. Um, yeah, bring up any subject. We'll try to touch on it, um, and we'll try our best to add it. I yeah, guess. yeah. So, guys, real quick, thank you for so, thank you, like seriously, thank you so much for watching our very first podcast. Um, this is we are not. There's no host or co-host here. It's us. All right, we are together. All right, not together, together, but we are best friends. So, brother, who just spoke? Was that? Um, that was my. That was your phone. Watch. Oh, your watch spoke to you. Like, uh, don't forget about me. It, it says it's looking for our podcast right it, now. It's, it's looking for our podcast. It says here's a matching YouTube result. Oh, Whoops. all right, good, good, good things are <laughs> happening. It's projected. So, this is this is um, I drew a blank. What was I just saying? Thank you. Yeah, thank thanks, you for thanks, watching. Guys. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot. I mean, we're trying to make this a thing. Uh, we're trying to have people come down and just talk and just share their own sides of anything. If, as um, as said, you guys can comment anything you guys would feel like would be open for discussion. Uh, just keep it logical, keep it professional, keep it realistic. We 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 will say no to certain things if it's yeah, out of our line. So uh, understand that you know, there's a certain point of well, we have to be. You have to keep a line of professionalism, okay? Yeah, because so, it's uh, it's not like, and I'm not, I can't believe I'm going to start off here. I am not going to do an Andrew Tate <laughs> and talk out of my out of my bum and contradict myself and put myself in a bad situation. No clout yeah. and disrespect towards Andrew. It's just that's the only it's the only podcast I know where it can yeah. get a little flimsy. So, so let's uh, keep it professional. Um, ask us any questions and uh, just let us know so we could uh, hopefully uh, you know you can hear us again and we can hear from you. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate it. People watching in the video, we'll see you in the next one. And for the people that are listening, we will see you next week. All right? Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye. See you later.